favorites, uh, Mark Kloss, is with us, who is here to talk about child safety. Mark, the father of Polly Kloss and founder of the Kloss Kids Foundation. Welcome to the Big 550 KTRS. Thank you so much. Um, it, uh, you became famous or infamous, uh, unfortunately, in 1993 when your daughter Polly was taken from her bedroom. That's correct. Uh, ultimately killed. The, uh, f- f- the murderer was convicted and sentenced to prison. It is amazing to me how you've taken such grief and have turned it into such a positive. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you, McGraw. It, what it's done is it, it's given me and my wife an opportunity to put a real positive spin on our lives. And mm-hmm. it took a long time to get to that point. But we can look back now over the 24 years since it's been, and we can see that we've made a difference in a, ver- a lot of different areas and that hopefully kids are much safer now than they were back in 93. What do you say to people who know who you are, mm-hmm. want to give you their right love and sympathies but they feel kind of awkward and don't want to bring it up and don't want to mention it it's a very right it's a very awkward social situation in those ways well it can be but here's what i would tell anybody in that situation is that if you've experienced loss uh, like i have or like anybody does anybody that loses a child anybody that loses somebody very close it's better to acknowledge it right because it's going to be on the top of their minds anyway and certainly if you go and you say i'm so sorry for your loss i can empathize with what happened to you and right. and offer them a hug it's going to be so much more meaningful than if if you turn away right uh, the you elephant know. in the room i don't want to, you know exactly. it, they know it but no one talks about uh, exactly. it exactly because that that leads to losing friends that leads to losing yeah. family members. do you ever get tired talking about it well it's at the forefront of my mind i mean i still think about polly absolutely every day and you know I, i've been looking back in fact in in these last couple of months on on all of this stuff and it, it's very much at the forefront and my house is surrounded it's it's full of poly things right. so you know she was the love of my life right yeah so, she what do was, you do she would be 36 this That's year right, is yeah. that right she would be 36 yeah can you estimate just guess how many lives how many children's lives have you saved from your campaign well you know i don't look at it that way really i i'm happy for all of the kids that are that are recovered or that don't go missing in the first place Mm but man that's them that didn't happen to me (laughs) you know Mm -hmm. it it just didn't uh we're very grateful for the legacy we've put together for her and believe that you know what one and a half million people in the united states died in 1993 and one of the few that ever gets talked about is my daughter yeah yeah Mm -hmm. uh you you, uh it was the first it was sort of the first it was your story and, and her story was the first where things change because of the internet, because of the attention, right? I mean, that was one of the first where it was sort of a national, a national spotlight on this. Well, there were a couple of things. She was the first missing kid on the internet. And a, 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 a guy named Larry Mag had put all of that together. He was a tech guy out of California. Yeah. He got her up onto the bulletin boards, as they were called mm-hmm. at the time. And it was also the advent of cable news. Mm. You know, uh, Fox hadn't even started yet. CNN was really the only cable news station. And right. they needed to fill 24 hours. And, and uh, our story offered them a way to help do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So a lot of things sort of catapulted and just moved this this case to the forefront yeah. and and grab people's attention. You have been on every news organization. Every time something happens, a child goes wrong, missing, they always come to you as the expert in the situation. And you said something, and every time I see you, I always ask you about it because it's so interesting. You say, well, God forbid, if you're ever in this situation and you're the father, you call up the police, you get to the police, and you say, here's everything I know about me. Yeah. Get the spotlight off me as soon as possible so I can, so you guys can find the real guy. Well, I said it much more inelegantly. I told them that if they wanted me to strip down and dance naked on the table, I'd be happy to do that. Right. And basically what I was saying was that my life is an open book and I'm willing to turn in anybody that I know if it's going to help get my child yeah. back. Let's talk about the Klaus Foundation because you've been... Been here coming to St. Louis for 20 years, and, and yeah. you uh, put together a kit to to help if, God forbid, something were to happen like this. Sure. It's our Printathon program, and we've been doing this, like you said, since 1997, so we're 20 years into that, and we have fingerprinted and photographed more than a million kids throughout America, and we've done it without databasing information or ever charging a family a fee for the service. And what we do is we digitally fingerprint and photograph kids and we give their parents what we call a bio doc. And it's got that information, the digital prints and picture, and blank form fields for personal and private.
private information. Mm -hmm. Then on the back, there are proactive safety tips, uh, some internet safety tips, and a 12-point plan on what to do in case of an emergency. And along with that, we give every parent a do-it-yourself DNA kit so they can collect their kids' DNA right. and, and hopefully give them inroads into having a positive conversation about their kids' safety. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you then give this all to the parents. Uh -huh. They hold it, and God forbid, if the police ever need it, they can put their hands on it, and that helps the police. That helps everybody. It helps the police. It helps the parents. Because one of the things we tell them, and this is back in 93, we were told to sit by the phone and wait for the ransom call to come in. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was sort of our response was supposed to be that. Now you can go to Facebook and you can make a missing child Facebook page that has pictures, that has video, that has testimonials, that has links, and that can link up with other missing child communities. Mm -hmm. You can do more now in an hour as a parent than law enforcement or the government would be able to do in several days back in the back in the early 90s. And I suspect sure. that would have been a godsend for you as opposed to driving yourself crazy waiting for the phone to ring. Well, we never waited for the phone to ring. I mean, mm -hmm. we, we became very proactive, and I think that was one of the things that sort of made our story stand out a little more. Right. Adam Walsh, uh, John Walsh, right. was, was proactive when his child was missing, uh, and then some years later we were, and, and really that's when the tide kind of started mm -hmm. changing. All right, so where started. should people go? How do they do this? Well, it's going to be at the uh, Kirkwood PD. Yes. And it's going to be tomorrow from 10 o'clock until 2 o'clock. Okay. Absolutely everything is free. There's going to be a lot of other vendors there. There's going to be hot dogs, hamburgers, things like that. And um, just the parents need to come. Do, do they need to bring the other uh, child with them? Yeah, it helps. Because <laughs> oh, they have to do a DNA. Yeah. Yeah. It, really, it, really, it really helps to be able to fingerprint the kids yeah. if they're there. <laughs> right. So tomorrow, Kirkwood Police Station on Madison Avenue uh, from 10 to 2 Tomorrow, uh, 10 to 2, no money, no cost. Go in. A, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Mm. And that it, makes... everything is being underwritten by the Munganast Auto people, yes. as it has been for the last 20 years. Uh, yeah. Mark Klaus, you are always welcome here. And to turn, you've seen the worst of society, but you've also probably seen some of the best. Mm -hmm. And I'm experiencing it right here. Oh, no, right you're now. very sweet. Mark Klaus is with us uh, and always with us. And as long as I have a radio show, he'll always be welcome here. Tomorrow, Kirkwood Police Station from 10 to 2. Get your kid bring your kid and uh, help the cause um thank you good luck thank Stay you safe safe safe